Are you wanting to quilt your quilt at home but don't have a long arm? Today I'm going to show you three methods. Hi, it's Fran Morgan with Fabric Cafe. We frequently get requests for videos on how to quilt a top once it's finished. Maybe you don't want to send it out to a long arm, or maybe you just want to do it yourself from start to finish. Well, today we have three methods we're going to show you on how to quilt that top. Now, the first method I'd like to talk about is stitch in the ditch. We have our square up pattern on the table, and I chose this pattern to demonstrate stitch in the ditch because it has a really good placement of seam lines, and it's going to really help us get our pattern that we're going to be stitching because we actually stitch on a seam line. Now this fabulous quilt here was long arm quilted, but we're going to show you how to do it with Stitch in the Ditch. All right, now let's take a look at the supplies that we're going to use for Stitch in the Ditch. So we've got your sewing machine, of course, your thread, curved safety pins, and batting. Now I'm assuming that you have a sewing machine already and you've chosen a fantastic one. So that one's covered, right? Okay, so now let's talk about thread. Now thread is a little bit more personal and specific. I prefer using just a plain poly thread just like I piece with. And I use this for stitch in the ditch because my machine doesn't always act nice whenever I put a heavier thread in it like a quilting weight thread. But if you can do it, by all means, you can use a quilting thread. Now something else I also use whenever it comes to thread is I will sometimes use an invisible thread. My preference on that is Sulky's invisible thread. I feel like it behaves the best. It doesn't tangle up too much. I also always purchase it on the larger spools so that it doesn't tangle so much. Those little spools tend to get all tangled. So if you're gonna try invisible thread, which is a great one whenever you have a really printed fabric and you don't wanna see it at all, then always get the bigger spools of the Sulky invisible thread. Now let's talk about safety pins. That's the third item on our list. I usually get a larger safety pin and we're gonna be using this to hold our quilt sandwich. And whenever I say quilt sandwich, we mean our quilt top, our batting, and our backing. We're gonna put those together with those safety pins. I like a bigger one because it's just easier to manage. And the other thing is I like a curved safety pin. The curved safety pin is gonna make it just a little bit easier to get through all those layers and then clip it. Okay, the last thing we're gonna need is our batting. Now batting is very personal and very specific to each person, I do know that. My preference on batting that I love is warm and natural 100% cotton. There's several reasons why I like it. It is a lower loft batting, and if I'm doing a quilt in the ditch at home, I want something that's a lower loft because the thicker lofts are gonna be really bulky and harder to get into your machine. By all means, there are some great other battings out there that have some poly in them and some different things like that that are low loft, high loft. This really is a personal preference. What I prefer is the warm and natural 100% cotton because I think it's nice and cozy. All right, now let me show you how you prep your quilt to start planning to get it stitched. So I have a sample here of our square up that I'd like to work with and show you. Now, as you can see, this would be, of course, your big quilt. I, this is just a sample. I have my backing fabric here on the back side. And as you can see, I have cut it three inches larger than the top. Now, one little bonus about doing this at home on your machine is that you don't have to make it quite as big as you would if you'd send it off to a long arm. If you're sending it to a long arm quilter, then you'll probably need a little bit more than this. But doing it at home, three inches is good. So then I have my warm and natural batting here, which is really great. It's a nice loft, which means the density of the batting. It's not too thick. It's gonna work really well for stitching in the ditch and then I have my top. Now, I have three squares of my sample already stitched in the ditch. I still have my corner pins in. I think that's very important that those corners stay there. But what I'd like to do now is show you how I pin through all of these thicknesses. And let's look at these safety pins. So here we have our safety pins. I do try to get at least this size pin so that you've got plenty to work with that'll catch all three layers. And of course, as I mentioned before, I have that curve. So I'm just gonna open the pin up. And whenever I pin, I try to pin at least every six inches, if not a little bit more, because this is gonna help stabilize these layers together and you don't want those layers shifting. So the more pins, the better. It will mean that you'll need to pause and take them out as you're stitching. 
but I kind of look at my pattern and square up is great here. And what I would do is, of course, pin on each uh, block seam here. And you can see how that curve just helps you to get all three th thicknesses. And whenever I do this, I usually do it on a hard surface. I would use my dining room table, but I would definitely put my cutting mat under it because you don't want your pen to nick your dining room table. So have that um, mat under it. So here is a seam in the center here. I would pin this here. And of course, let's just double check that. You see my pen has gone all the way through the thicknesses. That's very important. And then I would just keep going. I would pin on all of my block joinings and in the center. And you can see this is a nice distance that's gonna hold it secure, but maybe not too much because if there's too many, it's really hard to sew. So you always have to pause. All right, so before we go to the machine, I would like to talk about the quilting plan because when you start sewing in the ditch here, you're gonna kinda wanna think about how you do this. The first thing I would probably do is go on the outside edges, which we've already done here. And then we're gonna go here, I think. This is what I would do. So I would probably start in a corner on one of these blocks. I'm gonna sew around all the way to this corner. And then I'm gonna to wanna to go to the center, which is what I would do. So I would go backwards. And then I would sew on this seam and I would go around this. And then I would go backwards and then sew this one. And then I would go around and then sew this one and stop here. Now, don't be too afraid about backtracking and stitching on top of your existing stitches. If you ever look at a long arm quilter's quilting, you'll see that they do the same thing. They go back over an existing stitch line. That's okay. Probably would not go over it more than you know once, so there's two stitch lines in place, but that's it. The next thing is we are focusing on our seam lines, so you want that needle to fall right in that seam line. We got our plan, we've got it all pinned together, Let's start stitching in the ditch. So I am going to start right here on the corner of this middle block here. Now something that's very important to remember when you're stitching in the ditch is you want to be very aware of where your needle is gonna land. So on this particular foot, there's a red line right in the center. That is where your needle's gonna land on the center part. So you can line that red line up with your seam. There's another mark on this presser foot that is on the side here and here. That line is showing you where it's landing horizontally so that you know exactly where your needle's gonna land. Having that needle awareness is super important. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I pulled my ends long because I'm gonna tie these off. So if they're nice and long, they're easier to work with. I'm gonna put my machine so that or set my machine so that my needle is working in the down position. And what that means is every time you stop, your needle's gonna land in the quilt. The reason why that's beneficial is because when you go to pivot, it's not gonna shift on you, so it's gonna be perfect. The next thing I do is I'm just using a regular straight stitch. A lot of uh, machines will have a quilting stitch, but on this one, it's just a basic. We're just gonna use a normal straight stitch and you wanna lengthen your stitch just about a 0.5. So if your standard default is 2.5, you wanna move it to a three. So we've got that all set up, we're ready to go. I've got my needle in the down position. I'm lining up my red marks so that I know that I'm gonna hit that seam perfectly and we're gonna start sewing. So I don't go just super fast on this. I really try to take my time and really watch that needle and make sure that it's landing on the seam. And it looks like we're doing a great job here. And if you have to pivot, you just go slow, kind of switch that needle position a little bit. Okay, I'm coming to the corner and I'm gonna utilize those red lines on my presser foot. So I'm centered here and then I'm looking for this right here. That's where my needle's gonna land. So it looks like one more stitch. All right, oh, and that looks great. So I've stopped, it's landed in the quilt. I'm gonna raise the presser foot. I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna put it back down, lining up the center line here. And then I'm gonna keep going. And I'm gonna go and I'll meet you back around on this corner. 
Okay, so I have gone all the way around my square. And if you remember when we talked about our quilting plan, we were gonna backtrack and go up this seam here. So I'm at that seam. So I'm gonna go all the way to the corner and then I'm gonna turn around and go backwards and stitch on top of what I've already done. Turn it around. And you see how helpful having that needle land in the quilt is for pivoting. Okay, I'm using my red lines to find out where my needle is. I'm at the seam, so I'm going to turn and pivot again. Oh, and you know what? I need to adjust that just a little bit, so I'm going to raise my needle, raise my presser foot, shift ever so slightly over, because I went just a little bit past and I want it to be right on the seam, right in that ditch. And then we'll just keep going. Okay, I'm gonna stop there so that I can show you how I finish off. But you would keep going just as planned. So I'm gonna pull it out of the machine and I like to leave these threads really long like this. I'm gonna turn it over to the back and then I'm gonna just give a little tug to that bobbin thread which will pull that top thread through. So now I have top thread and bottom thread and as you can see over here, it's, it's pulled through to the back, and then I'm simply going to tie these in a little knot. And then I would get a needle and run them in between the layers and snip them. And that's all it is. So let me tell you about this great fabric that we use to make the square up sample here. I just think it's so much fun. So our focus fabric is the green and blue, and of course that green and blue falls in every square, which is great. That is our focus. Our number two is this light jade green, and then our number three is this gorgeous kind of a royal blue. Now don't forget, all of our kits are available on fabriccafe.com, and they're also in the description below. All right, now the second method I would like to show you is hand tying a quilt. Now we have our easy patch on the table here, and this is a really great one to hand tie. It just suits it perfectly. Now our sample here is actually long arm quilted, but like I said, I'm gonna show you on another sample how to hand tie. Let's look at our list of supplies that we're gonna need. Now we're gonna need a thicker thread like embroidery floss or pearl cotton. A needle threader would be super helpful, but of course it's optional. Now you're gonna need a cruel needle, curved safety pins, batting, and a hoop is also optional. So the first thing we're gonna need is our thicker thread. Now I have two options here. I have an embroidery floss, which is what we're gonna use today. And then I also have a pearl cotton. Both of these threads will work really nice. Our pearl cotton is an, a number eight pearl cotton, so that's the weight that I would recommend if I was doing it. And then of course our embroidery floss comes very standard with the six strands. Okay, the next thing we're gonna need is a needle. Now, I would recommend a cruel needle because it has a little bit larger eye on it. So it's gonna be, make it easier for those thicker threads to go through that eye. And like I said, that needle threader really makes a difference and that's certainly what I would use. The other thing you wanna watch for on your needle is to make sure you have a sharp and not a blunt because you wanna be able to get through all layers of your quilt sandwich to make sure you get all the way through the back and it makes it very easy. You're not having to like really work it through. It just slips right through. And then lastly, a hoop is optional. I prefer to hand tie without one, but certainly you can use a hoop if it makes it a little bit easier for you, just to help stabilize the quilt. Now I have my easy patch sample here on the table that I wanna show you the tying method with. And this is a darling combination of fabric here. When we start doing our hand tying, the first thing we wanna do is make our quilt sandwich, just like we did on our stitch in the ditch. So you see that we have our backing fabric here, our batting, and then of course our quilt top. Then we went in and we used our curved safety pins to pin it ever so often, just to make sure that those layers do not shift. 
then we need to think about our tying plan. Just like we thought about our stitch in the ditch plan, we do need to think about, okay, where am I gonna put my ties so that they're most efficiently placed and they look aesthetically pleasing, which I think is also important. So on this sample, what we've decided to do is tie at each corner of the blocks, as well as right in the center of each block. This way we kind of have a, a system and a method and it looks very balanced and very aesthetically pleasing. The next thing we want to do and what we chose is to use a fabric marking pen. Now we've used a water soluble to just place a mark right in the center. We can use our quilting ruler. We've got those squares. We can just measure it off and put it right in the middle. Your corners you wouldn't necessarily have to mark because they're pretty obvious, you know. But just to get it right in the middle or you can eyeball it, whatever you choose. Okay, after we have our plan, then we're gonna start with our thread. Now I chose the embroidery thread for this particular sample because I think it matched the aesthetic a little bit more because I liked this little burst from the fabric and I thought that the embroidery thread, whenever it unraveled, it gave us that little bit of a tassel look, which I thought was pretty cool. I've got my needle threaded with my embroidery floss. I do not have it knotted at the beginning or the end at all. Now I choose to do this by hand, so I just like the feel of it that way. I feel that I have a little bit more control. So I'm gonna go right here on this dot here, and I'm gonna put my needle in, going all the way through the layers, and then I'm gonna come up about a quarter inch. Now I can feel that underneath with my finger, so that's kind of the reason why I like to do this without a hoop. I'm gonna pull it through, you can see I'm right on that dot and I'm going to leave a long end. I need a long enough end that I can tie. Then I'm going to hold this with my thumb just like that and I'm going to go back into the same spot and back up very similarly on the other side. So another quarter inch stitch. I can feel it underneath so my needle has gone all the way through and I'm going to pull that as well. Now sometimes this could get just a little tricky on the thicknesses, and if you have trouble with that, you can use a pair of needle nose pliers or something like that. Now, this right here is my second stitch loop, and I'm gonna leave that just a little bit long there. So as you can see, this is my starting end. I've put it through, and I've put it through again, which created the loop. Here's my finishing end. Now, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my two long ends and my loop in, and I'm gonna tie those together. Now, I still have my needle on here, but you wouldn't have to. We're gonna put that through, and we're gonna tie. Let me get both of those. And then I'm gonna do it again, one more time. I'm just doing a simple overhand knot, nothing fancy. If you, wanna, if you would feel better with a more secure knot, that is just fine but I have found that this works really, really well. Now, here's my two long ends, here's my loop end. I'm just gonna grab my scissors and I'm going to trim this. And I like to trim it about an inch long and then I can go in and go Ch -ch 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 -ch, and that gives me that little tassel to give me the aesthetic that I'm looking for. And really, it's just that simple. Then we just rinse and repeat. Now, I love this fabric that we're using in our sample here. The kit has, our, of course, our three one-yard cuts. Our focus fabric here is a great rusty kind of retro burst there. I think it's really a lot of fun. And then our number two is almost like a double focus. It's the same fabric with the same kind of burst print on it, which is really fun. And then our number three is a nice beige texture, which really sets off both of the rust and the white. Be sure to check it out on our website, fabriccafe.com. The third method I would like to share with you is the running stitch. And we have our engagement pattern here that we would like to use as an example to show you how to do that. Now the engagement's a great one because it has lots of fun places to do the running stitch. Now of course this one's long arm just like our others that we've shown and we've got a sample in just a minute that I'd share with you to show you how we're gonna do that. But first, let's look at our list of supplies. We have our thread. Now you can use either a pearl cotton or a quilting thread. Our needle, which is usually a quilting between, but of course you probably have your preference on what you like to use. 
a curved safety pin, our batting, and a hoop to hoop our quilt so that we can do our running stitch better, thimbles, which are optional, fabric marker, and tiger tape, which is also optional but very helpful. So the first thing I want to talk about is our thread. I prefer to use just a regular quilting thread. This is a sulky. It's a nice thick weight. It has a little stiffness to it, which is great. But I know a lot of people are also using pearl cotton, which looks beautiful, comes in all kinds of colors, and will work equally as well with this. The next is our needle. Now, a quilting between is great because it has a little bit more of a rounded eye and it's a shorter needle so that it helps you hang on to it. But I'm a little different, you know that. I go rogue on a lot of things. I like a little longer, stiffer needle with a nice big eye. So that's what I'm gonna be using today. Hooping, to hoop or not to hoop. It's totally your preference. There's lots of different styles of hoops. So let's look at those. Now here's one that we saw earlier. This is just a very standard hoop. It's nice and big, great for your lap and can be used beautifully with this. There's also another hoop. We have this one here, which is really great because what's neat about this one is it actually comes apart so you can pack it in your suitcase if you're traveling a lot, or it's very compact. So if you have a small sewing space, this would be great to collapse and store. So this would also be very helpful. We're also gonna show you another hoop once we get going. Now, of course, thimbles. I, I do not use a thimble. It is a personal preference. I am one that whenever I quilt and I do handwork, I like to feel it. I like to feel the needle underneath. I like to feel what I'm working on. And I always feel like that the thimble is getting in my way so that I can feel where I am. Totally personal preference. And you know, once again, I'm the rogue quilter here, so I do things a little different. The next thing is a fabric marker. Now you do want to have some, some form of marking device so that you know where you're quilting and you get nice straight lines. I often will use a water soluble marker which are these blue markers here, and they do come out when you wash your quilt or just dab some water on it. It works really well for that. Chalk markers, now there's lots of different types of chalk markers that you can use. That also works really well. And then we have something called a hair, which is really great. What this does is it actually creases the fabric and leaves a crease line so that you can follow that. So there's no markings that you will have to get rid of or wash out or anything like that. So this works really well because with our quilt sandwich, it will leave a nice deep crease. So that's really great as well. Now, one more thing that is great to use when you're doing your hand uh, running stitch on your quilts is Tiger Tape. Now, Tiger Tape is a cool product that is a repositionable tape that you can use over and over again. And it actually has these little lines on it so that you can see exactly the space between your stitches so that they're very nice and even. And then it also gives you that straight line for marking. So it works really well. Let's talk about how we're gonna make this happen. We need our plan. So as you can see, we've already got our quilt sandwich put together with our backing batting and our top, and then we've got our safety pins in place. Now, we decided on the engagement because we loved this block and how the running stitch would, would work on it. It's really cool. You can see here that what we've done is we've done a running stitch along this border of this block here, and then on the border here on this block. Now we have our diamond, and you can see we've just done some triangles, and then in the middle here. Now we decided to just mimic that on this alternate block. So we have our diamonds here and then our center here. That's kind of what our plan is. Now we've used our marking tools. We've got our water soluble marker on our white fabric here. You can see that we've drawn that off. We have our chalk marker on the black so we can see it really nicely. And of course you can see our pins are holding it in place. So let's go ahead and get this in the hoop and start stitching. So we're gonna move our hoop over here. Center this block on our hoop so that we can get it all centered so it's easy to work with. We're gonna put this on and then I'm gonna tighten it down 
And I like a little bit of give whenever I put it in the hoop and then we'll start stitching. Now I have my needle already threaded with my thread and I chose to use the quilting weight thread in this really pretty green. And the reason why I chose the green is first, I thought it looked really great with our floral on here, but it also is a good color that popped off of the black and off of the white. So I think it works really, really well. The first thing I'm gonna do to start is I'm gonna tie a, just a little knot in the end of the fabric. And you saw me doing that just, it's like a habit, isn't it? So we're gonna get that knot down in the bottom there, just like that. And then I'm gonna start in a seam. Now I reach underneath and I put my needle in. At this point, I am going between the layers. I am not going all the way through. The reason why I'm doing that is because I wanna hide that knot between the layers. So we're just gonna take it all the way down and whenever the knot gets to the end, just gently pop it, then it'll come through. Okay, so now we're anchored. So now I'm gonna go through all the layers. I'm gonna put my needle straight down and then I have my hand under here so I can feel it and I'm gonna start my stitches. All right, so that's one. Now I like to do them one stitch at a time. I know a lot of people do multiple stitches but when I'm doing this long running stitch like that, I like to kind of feel it and just do it one at a time. The other thing is, is I'm very comfortable with my stitches when I'm doing a running stitch to not be perfect. I'm okay with that kind of fun, organic look of all the different size stitches. However, not everyone feels that way. So if you like really even stitches when you do that, the tiger tape is great for that. All you have to do when you're using your tiger tape is just pull it off. Now remember this is repositional. Just put it along your line there. You can also use this as your line marker. And then you can see these. You can just skip one line, skip two lines, do every single line, whatever you prefer. That'll keep your stitches nice and even, give you that guide. And this is cool because you can reuse it over and over again. Okay, so we've made a couple stitches here. And say you're at the end of your thread and you're ready to finish it off. So what we're gonna do here is just tie a little knot. So, and I like to pull it down so that it gets close to the fabric. And I'm gonna do one more just to make sure it's anchored well. And that one will be close to the first one, but not totally. And then I'm gonna go in to the same hole that I came out of on my last stitch. And then I'm going to go between the layers. And you see here I have a little less than an inch, more than a half inch, and I'm gonna pull this. Now, once again, I'm gonna give it just a little gentle pop and those knots will fall between the layers of fabric in that batting. And then what I'm gonna do is just pull this and clip it and there we go. It's just that simple. Very relaxing to do. Very nice to do on a, on a nice winter night too, whenever you're uh, watching a movie or with family. Okay, I love the fabric kit on this one too. The focus fabric is the floral and it has so many bright colors in the floral. I just really think it is a beautiful pop and really very, very pleasing. So our number two fabric is this white that's a texture and I think it goes really well because it also helps that focus fabric to pop. And then our number three is the nice black texture. It has lots of movement. Very, very nice with the black background on the focus fabric. What is your favorite quilting method? I would love to hear. Be sure to put a comment below. And don't forget all of the fabric kits that you saw today, all of the quilts that we've shown those methods on are available at Fabric Cafe and links are in the video description below. So it's Fran Morgan with Fabric Cafe. Thanks for quilting with me.